Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 and I'm going to start reading at verse 14. It's Jesus who's speaking here and he's telling a parable. You may have heard it before. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I've gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave, for you were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted to me two talents. See, I've gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew I reap where I have, did not sow, and I gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And cast out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, it's your day. May we celebrate in it. May we give thanks and praise to you. And Lord, will you transform us using this time called worship. A time, a space set aside where we, where we might hear your voice, see your hand moving. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning I, I read from the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 25 and Jesus is telling a story here. And the first words of his story are, for it is just like. Well, in order to know what this story is about, we have to know what it is. What's just like? Well, Jesus starts off talking about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And that was Jesus' number one favorite sermon topic again and again and again. He talked about that more than anything else. It's why he came. 
It's why he healed. It's why he gave his life on the cross. It's why he rose again. It's this kingdom that Jesus is ushering in. It's a new creation. This, 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 this kingdom right in the middle of the old kingdom, right in the middle of the old creation, he's breathing a life, a new creation available to, to you and to me. And so again and again and again, he, he shows what it is through stories. He shows what it is through healing. It's a kingdom where the broken are made whole. It's a kingdom where the lost are found. It's a kingdom that those who have ears to hear can hear the voice of God. Those who have eyes to see can see him moving right here, right here today, right in the middle of the old kingdom. And he tells a story. He says that that, that kingdom, that, that new creation that he, he's breathing in, and bringing in, ushering in, is like a man who went on a journey. Well, you go on a journey. You don't take everything you own. When you're loading the car and you have the suitcases, and it might seem like you're taking everything that you own, but no, you still leave some things back. Well, that's what the man did. He left back especially some money. He didn't take every dime he had with him, and he gave it to his slaves to manage, to watch to keep. To one he gave five talents, to one he gave two, and one he gave one. Now, it helps us to know what a talent is. A talent isn't an ability. A talent is a measure of weight. A talent is, is 70 pounds of silver. And 70 pounds of silver was considered to be what a person would earn throughout their whole lifetime. Ah, oh, this is an incredible sum. The first one he gave five lifetimes worth of silver. 70, pound, 70 times five, 350 pounds of silver. That's an incredibly gracious sum, an overabundance. To the second one, he gave two lifetimes of silver. Two talents. 140 pounds of silver. And we don't need to be deceived by thinking that the one who, who received one talent, well, he just received one little old talent. Nope. That was a lifetime's worth of silver. Even the one who received one received an incredible abundance, a gracious plenty. And then the man went on the journey. Well, when he came back, the one who he had given the five talents doubled Doubled those five talents. We don't know what he did. Maybe he went out and he, he bought a herd or several herds of, of sheep. And he began to, to breed them. And he doubled the size of the herd, sold it off and gave him back. Maybe he, he, we know he gave him back twice the amount he was given. The one who, and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. The second one, who'd received the two talents, says the same thing to him. Because he had taken what he'd given him, and he treated it as if it were his own. He treated it as if it were his own, and he doubled his master's money. Well, we know the real point of this story isn't pointing to the one who just had the five and the two. It's the one who had the one. That's where, that's where the, the teaching comes in. The, the, the one who had the one said, I knew you to be a hard man. Well, we've not seen that anywhere in the story. As a matter of fact, what we've seen is someone who shares a gracious plenty. And not only that, he invites them to enter into his joy. The slave who had the one. Well, he dug and he hid and he sat on his master's money. The point is, there's expectation on us. There's expectation on us. That we're here to do the best we can with what we have where we are. That entering into his joy... We're here to do the best we can with what we have where we are. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. 
doing the best we can. That's the first thing that I want to talk about. William B. McLean tells a story about a time he was in Korea. And he met a, a tailor named Smitty Lee. Well, he was surprised because he had never met anyone named Smitty in Korea. So he asked him, he said, is that a common name here in Korea? The tailor said, not at all. He said, during the Korean War, he told him that his life was saved by a soldier from Virginia named Smitty Lee. And the way the tailor put it, he said, he saved my life, I took his name. As Christians, that's what you and I have done. We take on the name of Christ. He saved our life, we took his name. Well, how did Jesus do that? He not only ushered in a kingdom where the broken are made whole and talk about it in stories where the lost are found and, and where those develop eyes and ears. It was through the cross. Through the cross, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin on our behalf. What does that mean? It means that he took in on himself all those things that would destroy us. He took on the sin. He took on the shame. He took on the fear. He took on all those things that would destroy us. But not only the very worst things, he took on those things we're most proud of. He took on our pride. He took on the arrogance that would destroy us. He took all those things on himself and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power, to kill it once and for all. And he didn't just say, and now do the best you can. No, he rose from the grave that he might live his life through us. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? We aren't left here to, to fend for ourselves. It's that his Spirit lives through you and through me. And the way that Paul put it in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's his life living through you and through me where we don't just do the best we can, we do the best he can through us. And that we know that it's his spirit that gives strength. We know that it's his spirit that gives power that lives his life through us and, and we do the best he can living his life through us. That there's hope that even in brokenness we'll be made whole because it's Jesus living his life through us. That even in those times that we feel lost, our hope, our strength, it's in Jesus and, and we're found again. We're made right. And that it's here, today. Jesus gives us ears that are able to, to hear his voice and to see his hand moving among us right here in the middle of the, well, of the old creation. That he's breathed in a new creation, a new life, a new kingdom right here in the middle of the old. And we, we do the best we can with his spirit living through us. But we do the best we can with, with what we have. Well, this story, it's a story about possessions. Possessions that, that we're entrusted with us. And we do the best that we can with what we have. I read a story about a 38-year-old washwoman. She loved going to the movies. And she would sit and look at the movies. And she would see these beautiful actresses on the screen and say, Oh, if I had beauty like that how my life would be different. She would watch the movies and she would see the, the actresses with these beautiful singing voices and she would say to herself, oh, if I just had a voice like that, how my life would be different. I wouldn't just be washing clothes for other people. And one day someone gave her a book. And in this book, it encouraged her to look to see the gifts that God had already given her. I, read, I saw a, a YouTube video with her, 
And she began to talk about this, this, this transformation in her life at age 38. And she said that, that she remembered back that when she was in high school that her friends and her school saw her as the funniest girl in school. And she liked helping people laugh. See the joy in life. And so she thought, you know, she may do well as a comedian. Well, that's unheard of for someone to start and to be in a comedian at 38 years old. But that's what she did. And at the height of her career, Phyllis Diller. Phyllis Diller was making the incredible sum of a million dollars a year. Well, the point of the story isn't that we all go out and, and be celebrity comedians. The point of the story is that God's placed inside you and inside of me. Possession. A talent. Paul says in Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. In glory in Christ Jesus. A possession, a talent, an ability that inside of you and me, that even the, the one that has least has the treasure of God, an incredible, gracious sum inside of you and inside of me. So often we see that as a, as a spiritual thing, a characteristic, and we say, but we all f- also have in our hands a financial sum. And too often we like to segment life and say, okay, this is the spiritual side over here and this is the, the physical or the financial side. And we, we hold back the financial side. Most of the illustrations Jesus used had to do with money. Because he knew that where your treasure is, there's your heart also is the way he put it. And that if we withhold any part of our lives, there's no joy in it. That it's in the the holding back. Saying, well, this is mine and that is God's. That we don't enter into his joy. That what we see most pronounced is the brokenness and not the wholeness. What we see most pronounced is the lostness and not being found that rarely will we hear or s- the voice of God or, or see his hand moving because we'll be the ones that are in control is there a part of your life the financial part of your life that you're, you're holding on to with both hands God wants heart, soul, mind and strength And your money too. Because very often that's where our our heart is. That's where your heart is. He's calling us to do the best we can with what we have. Not with what somebody else has. But with what we have. What you have. What I have. And we put our little with God's much. To do the best we can with what we have. Last thing that I want to talk about this morning is to the best we can with what we have, where we are. You know, for the longest time, I've been very, very interested in those very first words of God in the Bible. His first words are, let there be light. And every day and in creation, it says the Word, the Word of God that that brings order out of chaos, that brings creation into existence and then he says it is let us let us make man in our image that you and I are created in the image of God and everything we know about God up to that point is God is a a creating God a God who brings order out of chaos meaning out of things that seem to have no meaning at all and God said it's not good for the man to be alone And the first question that God ever asks in the whole of the Bible is after Adam and Eve have eaten from the fruit of the the tree that God told them not to eat, that God asks the very first question in the Bible. And that question is, where are you? And 
it might seem like an innocent question until you put it with the second question that God asks. And the second question God asks, he asks Cain. He says, where's your brother? Those are the two questions that are stamped on every soul, in every culture, in every nation, over the whole of the earth. Where are you in relationship to God? Where are you in relationship to your neighbor? It's a question that's not a small question. It's not a light question. It's the question that, that gives purpose. It gives a sense of who we are. So when Jesus came, he said, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in your midst. That it's together as the church where two or more are gathered that we begin to wrestle with that question of who God is. Where is, where are we in relationship to God? It's together that we wrestle with that question, where are we in relationship to our neighbor? And that as the church, as the church we point to Jesus. That there's a world out there that it's broken. It's longing to know that Jesus can make them whole. So together, church, you and I come together and we, right where we are, we point to Jesus. There's a world that, that is sense, has a sense of, of being lost. And so, church, we come together and, and we point to Jesus. That it's on the cross that the lost are, are found. And he rose from the grave. He rose from the grave that church, we might together point to Jesus. And let folks know that, that yes, it's in the here and now that he still speaks. And so we come together. Come together to, to answer those questions. Where? Where are you in relationship to God? Where are you in relationship to your neighbor? This past week, here on this campus, we provided groceries. We put our little with God's much. We invited others to take part up and down, churches up and down the street, to put our little with God's much, and together, we provided groceries home goods, things that are needed for over 200 families. We do that the first Monday of, of every month, this week, and every week. 40 su support group meetings are held right here on this campus through our counseling center to let folks know that they matter to God so they matter to us. And they navigate together that question, where are you in relationship to God? Where are you in relationship to neighbor? And so together, church, we point to Jesus. And so far this year, 93 young people have made a first-time commitment to Jesus Christ because he's the one that brings order out of chaos. Together, we reach out and support 39 mission partners starting right here where we are and we reach around the world. So this morning I want to invite you to take part in what God is doing. Take part in what God is doing. I want to invite you to take part in our 2023 giving campaign that we put our little with God's much. We open our hands and open our hearts that we, might, that we might point to Jesus together. That we let this world know that they matter to God and so, well, you matter to us. And we put our little with God's much. And we continue to reach out and together 
bring order out of chaos. Together, point to Jesus in whom there's life. Maybe on your screen right now, you see there's a a drop-down screen. And it's an opportunity to pledge. To pledge for the coming year. You have a personal budget and the church has a budget too. We want to reach out as, as stewards, good stewards, into a world that only knows brokenness. We want to let them know that Jesus is the one that makes us whole. There's a world that only knows what it is to be lost, and together we want to point to Jesus to let them know they can be found. I want to invite you to take part in what Roswell United Methodist Church is doing. The power of God, it works when we put our little with God's much. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, sometimes we like to segment our lives between the spiritual and the financial and the physical. That's not what you do. You cared for for people, for the broken. You made them whole. You cared for the lost. And you breathed your spirit. In resurrection, you you breathed your spirit on your disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. May that Holy Spirit not just be in our spirits, but in our, our bodies, in our wallets, where we love you with heart, soul, mind, strength, and our wallet as well. Sometimes that's the last thing to be converted, to be changed, to be transformed. And I know that it takes your power. Jesus, give us strength enough to do the best you can with what we have, where we are. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 1115 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create Humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.